Good morning, welcome to Bums on a Boat. My name is Joel. <laughs> we are about to take this sailboat out for the first time in over a year, and I'm doing it solo, which is also new. That did not work. Hey, you bums. Woo, but I've done the prep. My last minute preparations included cleaning the bottom again. Yeah, it took me that long to get her ready to go. Retiring my old outboard Johnny to Hog Island to make room for the new outboard, hoping Johnny will live again, and cleaning the dinghy. Am I nervous? Absolutely. It's time. It's time to get out there, test the systems. I've got the engine started. I've got the sails rigged up, ready to go. I've got the dinghy secured to the bow of the boat, the outboard. Everything is ready. We're I started with one reef in the main. I've actually never used this size sail. I always use the full main or the full reef main. But we've got a steady 20 to 25 out there. So to me, that's gonna be first reef in the main. So I've already got it set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and release on the sheet there. And then we're gonna pull it up. Forewarning, this first leg of my shakedown is short. My plan is to make each leg a little longer than the last. I'll work my way up to the longest leg with full sails and no engine. The goal of this day is to test my systems, get comfortable solo, practice anchoring, and to give myself one last opportunity to go to a marine store if I happen to need anything else. I will be running the engine because I want to see how it performs and gain confidence in it. If this will bore you, there are plenty of people doing epic crossings and racing around the world solo. By all means, move on. Don't say I didn't warn you. Now for those that are learning about sailing, um, I've left my sheet loose. So what that does is it just doesn't allow the main to power up. So it just constantly stays into the wind. So I can have a nice sail up and it's all ready for me to pull my mooring lines. And once I get underway, I can leave the sheet slack until I have a good heading and then I can tighten it. But now I already have the mainsail up and then it's just a matter of pulling my jib out, which I can do from the cockpit. Whew. These are the moments we live for. These are the moments I live for. Anyways, it's uh, all the prep, all the work came down to this moment, but I didn't do all the work to just be comfortable. Unfortunately, sometimes it feels that way. Like I did all this work, but now everything is nice. Do I really want to go out there and see what happens? Woo, let's go. Let's do it. We, we were born for this. We were made for this. Sailing solo. Mine's off. I've got the camera. So I'm a little more rushed. I want to get her in gear. Oh. All right, I think we're in gear. Whew. Tell me to relax. Tell me to relax. Embrace the butterflies. Oop. Just gonna pull that to the middle. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's just so intimidating. My GPS is working. Everything so far is good. Engine's working. Sail went up nice and smooth. <laughs> I'm a bit of an adre adrenaline junkie. Whoa. You know, I love jumping off cliffs. I like skateboarding. I like snowboarding. But when you've worked really hard on your home essentially and you put so much work and money and love into something and then it's time to take it out and just see what happens. I mean, I gotta give it up to all you cruisers, all you sailors out there. A lot of you are in your 50s, 60s. You're getting this rush, this adrenaline. You're facing your fear, you're out there. Woo, so much to think about. All right, I've just hit auto. It appears that we are holding course. 
Give it a couple clicks to the right. Okay, so it might be reversed. So when I went right, it went left. Stand by. I had a feeling. Um, I, did, I think I need to change my wiring um, because when I tell it to go to starboard, it turns to port. And I kind of thought maybe that's what I was seeing uh, in my test, but it's hard to test this thing on a mooring ball. And I realized my test wasn't good because I need to take it out. The only thing is now if I want to go to starboard, I'll just click to port um, for this sail. <laughs> and this is a good example of, you know, things for me in my experience are not always perfect. In fact, I've never left with everything being perfect on the boat or with myself. Everything is just, you know, as good as I can hope for. It's as good as it will possibly be at the point that I'm at and it's like time to go. I'm using my new GPS here. So I got my GPS and I got Navionics here for the backup. So this is the most butt puckering part. I'm just going in between two reefs. I'm going the safe route. There was another way supposedly, but it looked crazy, super tight. This is um, the biggest uh, gap through the reef and I'm going away from my target, but it's a no brainer here. So I'm going dead into the wind, motoring into it. I got about 2000 RPMs. The GPS is tracking my position well. My Navionics is working, but I'm going to have to take the screen saver down or off because it keeps uh, going to bed and that's annoying. Autopilot's a little fishy. I, I don't know what's up with it yet. I'm gonna wait till I get out away from reefs and boats. And then we'll see. Because the autopilot is not working quite right, uh, it, it did say drive unit stopped. And because I'm going downwind, I'm not gonna pull the head sail out on this journey. I wanted to. I think when it's trying to adjust, it's adjusting in the opposite direction. And then it's 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 seeing that it's not able to hold the course because it's trying to, but it's going the wrong way. I'm a little bummed that the autopilot's not holding, but you know, what are you gonna do? I have an idea. I have an idea. I think it might help out. Pretty cool. We well, out here. We'll cross the wind, which even though I only have the mainsail out, I uh, definitely gotta be careful. What I'll do is I'll slowly, slowly come so the wind's right at my back. And as I do, I'll pull the sheet in and pull the uh, main to the center and then let it out so it doesn't go slamming across to the other side. If I gotta make these miles without an autopilot, I think I'm gonna do it. I'll figure out how to tie this line down balance my sails, but I really like to have an autopilot. It's another level just going out here all by yourself. It's uh, different, I'll be honest. So much to think about, no one to rely on but you. No one to be your eyes, it's all you baby. I guess this is, this is what, what I needed to learn. All right, let's try to cross the wind here. As I, as I come more into it, hopefully I can pull it tighter. Woo. Oh, that did not work. That's what I was trying to avoid. That was a good test on the rigging. Uh, yikes. Uh, I guess I needed to pull it to the center quickly with two hands and not mess about. God bless it. Wow. <laughs> that really slammed across. Dang. You have to really closely look at stuff after that one. So I've got the anchor ready to drop. This is gonna be the biggest challenge for me is how do I successfully find the spot, go into the wind, leave the helm, drop anchor, do all of that. So I think I got it. But uh, this is really it's just kind of learning as I go. I've decided I, I wanna try to pull my main down out here. 
So the trick is my autopilot's not holding, but I'm gonna just turn into the wind, idle down, and then hit engage autopilot and just hope, and then run up there and try to drop this, this main. That's the plan. Oh, yeah, I hate to see it. I thought I was filming. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, on top of sailing solo and everything, uh, filming, Getting it all so it's really entertaining for you guys and fun. This is a it's gonna take me a couple a couple tries here. But I, I just went forward, dropped the main. It worked well. I just turned into the wind and then I engaged autopilot. I, I, I throttled down just to try to hold, but not to move too fast. And hit autopilot and it held just long enough to get it down. And then when I got here it said drive stop. So we're gonna try to figure out what's going on there. So I saw my friends Alex and Emma, who I met um, in Luperon a few years ago, and they were anchored just out of the channel over here, and it was a little bit rolly, but I did notice they had good access to Budget Marine, which I'm gonna need to go to, and um, I think it probably was fairly easy to find an anchor anchorage over here. I noticed you can just kind of go up the channel and then nose into it. So I'm gonna kind of look for the spot that they were using, because they just sailed up to Carry Q. It's gonna be 20, 30 feet deep, not a big deal, but you know, I don't have a windlass or anything. Everything's by hand. And I'm just trying to consider what it's gonna be like pulling this anchor up when I'm all by myself. That's gonna be a lot harder than dropping the mooring lines. But we can do it, right? Either we can or we can't, and we're gonna find out. This is how we're gonna find out, by just sending it. <laughs> well, I broke something and the autopilot didn't work. So I'm remembering all the lessons that I have learned. I'd like to share with you what's going through my mind. Slow is pro. So I've turned into the wind. Just cut the engine. Battery died before the anchoring, but it went smooth and it probably helped not worrying about the camera because you know I had to squeeze a little bit and I just wanted to make sure I did a good job. My boom bang is pretty funny. I've seen like aluminum boom bangs. Um, so this here runs to here, goes through this, and this little line here, it runs through this block here, and it was secured here to this. So this, this is what broke, just snapped. Oh. My boom bang. All right, but I'll fix that. We'll investigate the autopilot. We'll go to Budget Marine, which is right over there. Old strong shock. Had about an hour and a half to watch it. Swing, we're going in. Got a list of a few things I want to pick up. And the outboard's working. I made sure she was working before we left. See how long she'll work this time. All right, it's been productive since we left Shock Mate. I set the anchor, I backed it down hard, everything looked good, but still I have that little bit uneasy feeling. It'll be nice to see Shock where I left her. I'm not seeing her right now. It's a new anchorage, so maybe I don't know where to look, but I'm a... Oh boy. I've got eyes on her. All right, it's a little breezy, but she's right where we left her. So now I have switched the motor wires and when I engage the autopilot, I really watch the bow of the boat and as we shift, I'm seeing the wheel now turns in the correct direction. So that's hopeful. So I'm gonna put the locker back together now and we're gonna send it again. We really want this autopilot. You know, by we, I mean us. I've said this multiple times, you know. I'm not alone on this journey. I got my cameras, you know, I got this bug here. All right, so I also went in, upped up my cruising permit already, so now we're good. My visas, I got plenty of time on my visa. My cruising permit's good. Boom, paperwork is solid. I got a few extra things because I broke my boom bang, so I'm gonna rig that up. I got some silicone yesterday for my wire, uh, for my newly installed GPS that I still, I, I still didn't completely waterproof it. And then I got a Grenadian flag, courtesy flag, because I couldn't find one on the boat, strange. Must I know I had one. 
This was the best way I could think of to run my courtesy flag line solo. Ah, one of the many exciting things about being solo. You gotta just figure out ways to do things on your own. We are all ready to go, but this weather is dicey and it's raining, gusty. Oh boy. All right, hang on, hang on. What's going on? We're getting tested today. So many ways. Oh, I certainly don't want to leave in this. But, uh, woo. Well, the weather's just gonna be gusty and iffy today. Uh, there's no getting around it. It just kind of rains, stops, starts blasting, then it calms down. But I'm gonna send it. Um, autopilot seems to be working better, um, or it's doing what it should be doing, but we're at anchor, so wish me luck on that. I've got uh, my new route um, all set, ready to navigate to. Dinghy secure. I got my I got my flag, so that was the thing I realized I wanted my insing flag, so people know who I am and where I'm from. And I got my courtesy flag, so I just feel more legit. That was something that popped in my head as I, as I was on my way here. Um, I fixed the boom bang that snapped when uh, when I did that crazy jibe on accident. Uh, so I went and got a line and just retied it. So it looks good. All right, wish me luck. The biggest challenge is going to be to uh, pull this anchor by myself because this boat up here, we're crossing paths. The wind keeps shifting and, I, and, and as it crosses over, I go right underneath, I, you know, the anchor's right underneath him at a certain point and I cross. So I'm gonna have to wait for us to get far away and then put it in gear and run up and this will be my first time pulling anchor by myself. It's deep, like 26 feet. Um, and like I said, it's a little concerning with this guy here. So stay tuned. Um, you're gonna be, you're gonna have to catch next week. This is the end of this episode. We sent it. Um, it was just baby steps is what my, my goal, my method here for the madness is baby steps. We tested things out. There were a lot of positives. The autopilot not working was a bummer. I'm hopeful. That's the big, big thing that we'll be testing out on this next little uh, leg. It'll be a little longer than the last one. Uh, see now you can see that boat is right off my bow. I mean the anchor is right underneath him and then we cross and then the, the anchor is over here now. So this is going to be fun. Stay tuned. Thank you patrons. I love you guys and here we are. We've made it so far but <laughs> still seems a little dicey but we're, we're sending it right. We worked hard. All right and um, let's go baby. All right we're starting to cross. As soon as we cross I'm going to go for it. These are the tales of Boab.